SE0244 adds the concept of opaque types into Swift. An opaque type is one where we're told about what an object can do without specifically knowing what kind of object it is. At first glance, that sounds a lot like a protocol. But opaque return types take the concept of protocols much further. Because they're able to work with associated types, they require the same type to use internally every time, and they allow us to hide implementation details. As an example, if we wanted to launch different kinds of fighters from a rebel base, we might write code like this. Protocol fighter, struct x-wing conforms to fighter, func launch fighter, returns fighter, return x-wing. Then, let red5 equals launch fighter. Whoever calls that function knows it will return some sort of fighter, but doesn't know precisely what. As a result, we can add a struct y-wing that conforms to fighter, or other types, and have any of them be returned. But there's a problem. What if you wanted to check whether a specific fighter was red5? You might think the solution is to make fighter conform to the equatable protocol, so we can use equals equals. However, as soon as you do that, Swift will throw up a particularly dreaded error for the launch fighter function. Protocol fighter can only be used as a generic constraint because it has self or associated type requirements. The self part of that error is what's hitting us here. The equatable protocol has to compare two instances of itself to see whether they're the same. But Swift has no guarantee that the two equatable things are remotely the same. We could be comparing a fighter with an array of integers, for example. Opaque return types solve this problem because even though we just see a protocol being used, internally, the Swift compiler knows exactly what that protocol actually resolves to. It knows it's an X-wing, or an array of strings, or whatever. To send back an opaque type, use the keyword sum before your protocol name. From the caller's perspective, that still gets back a fighter, which might be an X-wing, a Y-wing, or something else that conforms to the fighter protocol. But from the compiler's perspective, it knows exactly what's being returned, so it can make sure we follow all the rules correctly. For example, consider a function returned sum equatable like this. func make int returns sum equatable. int.random in 1 through 10. When we call that, all we know is we'll get back some sort of equatable value. However, if we call it twice, then we can compare the results of those two calls because Swift knows for sure it'll be the same underlying type. We could say, let int1 equals make int, and let int2 equals make int, then print int1 is equal to int2. The same is not true if we had a second function that returns sum equatable, like this. func make string returns sum equatable. And I'll pass back red. Even though from our perspective, both send us back an equatable type, and we can compare the results of two calls to make string or two calls to make int, Swift won't let us compare the return value of make string to the return value of make int, because it knows comparing a string and an integer doesn't make any sense. An important proviso here is that functions with opaque return types must always return one specific type. If, for example, we try to use bool.random to randomly launch an X-Wing or a Y-Wing, then Swift will refuse to build our code because the compiler can no longer tell what will be sent back. You might well think, if we always need to return the same type, why not just write the function as func launch fighter returns X-Wing? While that might work sometimes, it creates new problems, such as we end up with types we don't really want to expose to the world. For example, if we used summarray.lazy.drop, we get sent back a lazy drop while sequence, a dedicated and highly specific type from the Swift standard library. All we actually care about is that this thing is a sequence. We don't need to know how Swift's internals work. We also lose the ability to change our mind later on. Making launch fighter return only an X-Wing means we can't switch to a different type later on. And given how much Disney relies on the new Star Wars toy sales, that'd be a problem. By returning an opaque type, we could return X-Wings today, then move to B-Wings in a year. We only ever return one type in any given build of our code, but we can still have the flexibility to change our mind later on. In some respects, all this might sound similar to generics. 
which also solve the self or associated type requirements problem. Generics allow us to write code like this. Protocol Imperial Fighter has initializer method. Then struct TIE Fighter conforms to Imperial Fighter and struct TIE Advanced conforms to Imperial Fighter. Finally, Funk Launch Imperial Fighter is generic over T and Imperial Fighter and returns a T, then return a new T. So that defines a new protocol that requires conforming types to be initializable with no parameters, defines two structs that conform to that protocol, and creates a generic function to use it all. However, the difference here is that now callers of launch Imperial Fighter are the ones to choose what kind of fighter they get, like this. Let Fighter 1 is a TIE Fighter equals launch Imperial Fighter. Or let Fighter 2, a TIE Advanced, equals launch Imperial Fighter. If you want callers to be able to select the data type, then generics work well. But if you want the function to decide the return type, then they fall down. So opaque result types allow us to do several things. First, our functions decide what type of data gets returned, not the caller of those functions. Second, we don't have to worry about self or associated type requirements, because the compiler knows exactly what type is inside. Third, we get to change our minds in the future whenever we need to. And fourth, we don't expose private internal types to the outside world. If you ever forget the difference between protocols and opaque types, think of this. Returning a fighter means returning any sort of fighter type, but we don't know what. Whereas returning some fighter means a specific sort of fighter type, but we still don't know what. In the latter case, the difference is that the underlying type is something specific the compiler knows about. Whereas in the former case, it can literally be anything that conforms to the protocol even being different every time we call the method.